Uh, first, we uh, talk about a mission, and then followed by system design, and we talk about some technical, uh, technical skills, organizations, and so on, and we'll talk about the conclusion for the last. Okay, talk about the mission from Ashraf. Hello, uh, I'm Ashraf Nabil, a senior student in aerospace engineering, Cairo University. Uh, here we can find a contradiction between these two cases. Uh, the first case, people are suffering from overflow food, while the other one are suffering from shortage of food. One other major problem is the water pollution for many countries. Um, water pollution, I think uh, Nile River is almost the water resource for uh, all Nile Basin countries, and any massive pollution in it will affect all the countries. So our mission is to, is to establish a network of water resources depending not only uh, on a payload on the satellite, depending on a sensor network on the ground, ground sensors. These ground sensors collect the data from the, uh, from the river and transmit it to the satellite when it passes over it. And then the satellite stores this data and then transmit it back to the ground station. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, that the uh, cost is many is the more, most important thing, and we have an estimate for the target total system cost will be less than six hundred dollars. Uh, okay, water resource system is for Nile River just an initial project, just proof of concept for using a network of ground sensors. And after the success of the project, we can implement or apply this project for many other countries all over the world. Uh, one other main thing that we will work after that on improving the stem and forward, store and forward, sorry, uh, communication network to be used from Cube satellite, which is easily to be implemented, and we can make a constellation to make just any real time uh, monitoring for the NARIB. One other thing that this in project can be an international incorporation project, not depend on only one organization or only one country. Okay, someone can think that water monitoring is an idea that have been used before and illustrated many times. But there is two things we have to take in consideration. The first one, water is using more water monitoring using ground sensors is a very unique mission that not used before. One other thing that uh, water monitoring for Nile River or any other thing is like remapping this river. For example, you can saw here a figure, uh, an, a map, ordinary map for the Nile River, passing all the uh, countries, Nile Basin countries. But this map, with the data we can get from the satellite, we can remap this, this map to a map contain many useful data, like knowing the location, the best location for generating electricity for fisheries, for agriculture. We can know also the location of countries with the most polluted areas located, and we can impose sensations on those countries to decrease the pollution in the river. Okay, after asking some experts in Nile River and making some preliminary mission analysis, we found the most important parameters that we won't really measure from the river. Here we can find water level, uh, the acidity, clarity, the dissolved oxygen percent in the water, and the temperature. Uh, of course, these parameters can be modified at, uh, later, but this is, for until now, is the most important parameters that we want. One other important thing is that sensor selection and number of se sensors. Uh, this issue is not determined yet, since it depends on many other parameters, such the sensor availability, the cost, the locations. We want to know really how many countries from the Nile Basin countries will participate in the project uh, and each country how many sensors they want to put in the Nile so it is a matter of uh, can be discussed later. Here we can find an example of one of the parameters that we want to measure which is the water level. We want an observation range about 5 meters, uh, resolution about 0 0.01 meter, uh, the required data about 9 bits, uh, observation frequency per day 24 times uh, and so on. Uh, our success criteria has been classified into three parameters or three categories. The minimum success is at least we can get information from one, from one sensor at one location for about six months. Uh, our, all, uh, the, our extra success, or sorry, our full success is we can get all sensor data from one location 
uh, from one location for two years, and our extra success is getting all that we want from many many sensors along the river and transmit it to our ground station for about two years. Uh, here I will give a uh, talk to Mr. Oyoma who can, who can talk more technically how we can implement this idea using the ground sensors. Thank you. Okay, uh, here is the concept of global network for on-ground sensor with non-microsatellites. Uh, this is uh, especially for uh, the uh, water level monitoring sensor, but it, the, the basic system is we call the stone first communication system. The on-ground sensor uh, measure data and send the data to the satellite when the satellite fly over the sensor. And the data will be stored in the uh, satellite. And when the satellite fly over a ground station, the data will be downlinked to the ground station. And after data processing, the measurement data will be distributed to the uh, scientists and researchers worldwide. This is called a stand for communication. This is a key system for our uh, water uh, resource monitoring system. Here is a, a typical specification for HODL 3 and 4. And uh, you can see a standard for uh, communication system. Both sides has a standard for communication system as a one of the missions of system. And here is a receiver. Uh, it's for uh, HODL satellite standard for uh, communication receiver. Uh, the, this uh, table summarizes the uh, specification of the receiver, and the characteristics is uh, the Hodoyoshi stand for the communication system does not perform on orbit the modulation of the signals, only perform high speed AD conversion of received signal and st store the data. That means it's possible to change the uh, modulation method for data even after Hodoyoshi satellites are launched. Uh, here is the uh, water level uh, monitoring sensor. It's uh, one of the water uh, resource uh, monitoring sensors. Here is uh, named Abiki-kun. I show you in the Nanasada simple. It's originally developed by ha Japanese high school students. Uh, this system uh, camera capture image and estimate the water level by the size of the float in the image. That means that when uh, water level is high, the floor looks bigger. And water level is low, the floor uh, looks smaller. So the system can estimate the water level by using the size of the floor in the image. And the Japanese uh, high school students keep trying to improve their sensor. Now it's, they have Abiki-kun R, a new version of the sensor. The modification is changing the sensor. They change the sensor from a camera to an uh, ultrasonic sensor to measure uh, water uh, level. And they perform uh, preliminary testing uh, for, uh, for their sensor. Uh, according to their uh, test results, the measurement error will be uh, roughly within a couple of centimeters. They also uh, tested uh, different configuration sensors. Uh, different sets with tube, but with or without tube, or uh, with or without a float. Uh, fortunately, all three configuration works fine, but they think uh, they need to do uh, further testing because uh, the waves can uh, degrade the measurement stability and accuracy because there are no fraud, for, uh, especially for uh, configuration number two and three. And number three, it's good for uh, water level monitoring sensor only configuration because all system can be put uh, well above the surface of the water, that means very robust to the front. On the other hand, number two, uh, it's good for uh, multi-sensor configuration, especially other sensors need to be put under water. That tube can be uh, used as a support structure for that sensor that need to be put under the water. Okay, um, one of the key components for a uh, ground uh, sensor system, it's a transmitter. And uh, this table summarizes the uh, typical specification for the uh, transmitter. Our uh, transmitter is uh, currently a prototype transmitter is being manufactured at the uh, uh, manufacturer. And uh, we are planning to, uh, field testing will be performed by the end of this year. So we can make sure our uh, key component uh, is 
working well or not by the end of this year. Okay, next would be the data transmission. Uh, there are two different uh, data transmission modes, one sec mode and 10 sec modes. And uh, data transmission speed is 300 BPS for two, both modes. And signal recognition and info header need to have a 0.1 second. That means the transmittable data size per one data transmission attempt would be uh, 270 bits for one sec mode and uh, 2,970 sec, uh, bits for 10 sec modes. Okay, also, uh, ground sensor need to know when, how does satellite fly over the sensor. Therefore, a sensor keeps orbital elements for hardware satellites and estimate when hardware satellites fly over the sensor and can send the data. So uh, the uh, orbital elements become inaccurate over the time. Therefore, uh, multiple data transmission attempt between AOS and LOS, uh, that means the acquisition signals and uh, loss of signals, will be made. So in typical, two to four times data transmission attempt will be made uh, during the one uh, single uh, communication window. Okay, to prevent the data transmission failure, the object observation data will be sent twice. Let's see, uh, data taken between data transmission attempt number two and three, let's show that. Uh, will be uh, sent to the satellite by the data transmission attempt number three and four, and so on. And uh, to accommodate the uh, uh, large number of uh, ground sensors, we adapted uh, TDMA uh, for multiple access. Uh, that means uh, for 10 sec mode, we can uh, receive the data up to uh, five sensors data. Uh, for one sec mode, the number of sensors is up to 50 sensors. Therefore, uh, if uh, the number of sensors in a certain uh, area, which can reach the signals at the same time to the satellite, uh, definitely we need to have uh, additional way to multiple access or we need to have uh, additional satellites. So uh, I think we need to uh, develop a SNF stand for uh, satellites are required to overcome the uh, limitation of the number of sensors. Okay, here are the uh, link budget analysis. Uh, we confirm one watt transmission power is enough with certain uh, cons constraints. Uh, here is a typical uh, communication window. Uh, it's a uh, sensor is located in Egypt, and, uh, and the uh, uh, typical duration of communication window is two minutes to four minutes. And uh, the interval of uh, communication window is 11, 13, or 24 hours. Uh, as you know, we have two uh, HODL satellites, HODL 3 and 4. Uh, the orbit for those two satellites are similar, but slightly different. That means the relative location between two satellites will change over time. So uh, when the two satellites uh, fly very closely, the one holder satellite cannot get uh, data from a uh, sensor. The other, sen uh, the other holder satellite cannot get the data either. In that case, the interval of data transmission is about 24 hours. It's, it's a worst case. On the other hand, when the uh, relative position of two holder satellites uh, uh, far away enough, the either uh, holiday satellite can receive a data in every 11 or 13 hours. Uh, here is the data latency. Uh, data latency is a time delay uh, from the AOS time for ground station, a uh, ground sensor, and the AOS time be, uh, on for a ground station. This is a uh, uh, sensor is located in Egypt. The maximum data latency is uh, about less than six hours. But if we put a sensor in uh, Southeast Asia, uh, maximum data latency is about 10 hours because the data, uh, data uh, latency is heavily dependent on the uh, data location between ground sensor and the ground station. Here, let's talk about something about the technical risk. One risk is of launch failure of satellites. 
And uh, for, to minimize the risk, we have uh, Hot Wheels 2 satellites that can be used as a backup because Hot Wheels 2 satellites have a strong for a communication system. And uh, worst case, in case of no available satellites, limited observation activities will be performed with a uh, ground-based network like a cell phone network. The next technical risk would be development failure in the space segment. The uh, Hot Wheels third and fourth uh, satellites are main uh, space segment for the, our project. Uh, this, these satellites are currently in the phase of uh, flight model integration and testing without delay. That means the risk of uh, development failure is very low. The next one is the ground segment development failure. I think the most risky component is transmitter. The uh, prototype transmitter is being manufactured and testing uh, planned. So I believe the uh, ground segment development failure is also low. And this is a development failure risk for a uh, water resource observation sensor because there are many uh, strict resource limitations for a sensor, like a power, uh, size, data size, cost, and maintenance free or something. But to minimize the development risk, uh, the most promising sensors will be chosen based on the priority, uh, technology readiness level, cost availability. So, to, uh, so we believe we can minimize the risk too. And another risk, one number of sensor not working properly or losing. To minimize this risk, we only replace the sensor which is not working, not whole system. So we'll, we'll adapt a replaceable sensor design like a PC accessories. Okay, so, uh, sustainability project, we will make a community for uh, using the uh, measurement data. Okay, here's the organization. Uh, various organizations join this project from Japanese high school to organization in Egypt. Now this is organization in Egypt. There are many uh, government agencies willing to join. Also there are two uh, universities and uh, some doctor, uh, professors uh, willing to join this uh, project. Okay, future plan. Um, we will develop the Stanford Satellite Constellation with the CubeSat and to uh, accommodate a large number of uh, sensors, we will use a different algorithm to accommodate a large number of sensors. And that should be international cooperation. Also, we'll develop a universal on-ground uh, observation sensor because uh, so far the communication system is not only for water resource monitoring. Here is the schedule. First couple of years, we will test it in Japan. And third year, we'll deploy it to Egypt. After that, we will deploy worldwide, also start uh, developing the future plan. All right, conclusion. Uh, our mission, uh, utilizing NASA satellite for water monitoring for Nile River is a very unique mission. And it can positively impact global society, especially after the cube size stand for satellite constellation is deployed. Since Hot 3 and 4 satellites are almost ready for launch, the technical feasibility is high and the technical risk involved is considered minimal. The future plan calls for the multinational collaboration, the harmonized effort by the international teams, including Japan and Egypt, is crucial to achieve the common and ambitious goals to contribute to global society. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. OK, is there any question? Okay, uh, so in your current estimation, you know, maximum uh, delay, uh, data latency is uh, about uh, six hours? Yes. About five hours something. Yes. And so to, this is, yes. this is the acceptable from the user side, or is it, is it more, uh, you know, reduced? It should be more reduced? It's different, it depends on the application. So well, some application does not want, for it's not allowed. Yeah, yeah, for the Nile, Nile River case. How about that? I think w this this number for the initial start, I think it will be very very a good estimate. And I think after deploying the nano satellite constellation using the cube satellite, it will decrease and it will be much more better. Yeah, yeah. Of course, the, the uh, smaller the better. But the, what is the required, you know, uh, maximum allowable uh, later data latency for the Nile River? For example, the flood prediction case. 
Till now, we, we do not have an exact number, but I think I think it will be uh, a, a good one till now. Um, I wonder if you can just go to your link budget slide. Um, thank you, yes. Um, I mean, one. Th I wonder whether you have considered not just the theoretical link budget, which is always very uh, attractive, <laughs> but yes. the realistic noise floor okay. at 400 megahertz that would uh -huh. be experienced by the spacecraft and what the signal to noise might then be. I think this is just a theoretical, yeah, it's true, yeah. But, uh, so uh, we are going to uh, test it with the prototype transmitter by the end of, well, this year. So we're gonna make sure. Uh, not real long range test, but we're gonna test uh, like 100 kilometers or so. So I believe we if can I might, If I might give that. you some advice, the, the satellite will see a very large area of the Earth. And actually it is the other transmissions coming from the Earth which will raise the noise floor possibly by 10 or even 20 dBs which okay. will change your link budget dramatically and the power requirements and the antenna requirements. Yeah. And I think this is one of the key points that, right, you, right. that you would need to address. So, uh, I, I know, yeah, thank you for, uh, so I said that constraints, there, the ground sensor can uh, only communicate to satellites when the satellite elevation angle is more than 30 degrees. So, to avoid such kind of uh, very noisy environment. But we'll make sure. With our real hardware. Well, w one question from my side: You assume a tracking antenna at the sensor on the ground. It's a tracking antenna tracking the satellite. Uh, this is not tracking antenna; it's just a kind of omni uh, di dipole antenna. Ten so dB, I ten dB I gain. I think I have put the uh, set uh, zero uh, minus ten dB yes. for a dipole antenna, but not yeah. tracking the satellite. Not tracking. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, patch kind uh, of. Just another question. Uh, for this type of application, uh, what is the main advantage of using satellites to gather the sensor data? Why not use a GSM network, a ground-based cell phone network, to, to sample the data from the sensors? I think this system is can only be used uh, where the area which cannot be used the uh, ground-based network. This is only application, only for the area. We cannot get the data by using the cell phone network or some other ground-based network. So alongside, along the Nile, Nile River, you don't have cell phone communication all the way? Uh, if we can use a, a cell phone network, we can use it. We can combine them. So there isn't a clear advantage using satellites? Above the uh, uh, if, uh, the, we can use this system like a very, uh, in the middle of the ocean, you cannot use a cell phone network, but this can you be used. That's the uh, biggest advantage. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> Besides the transmitter problem, uh, sending problems, uh, I think a major problem will arise with the, with the ground stations. Uh, from the user, we have heard that uh, sometimes 24 samples per day are necessary. Mm -hmm. And uh, you have a complex system covering not only the, the water level, mm -hmm. but also pH value, the cleanliness of water, the temperature, oxygen value, value. All this data needs to be stored and managed in this ground station measurement device and then sent up and, and I think that is not, uh, it's a problem with power, uh, power supply and, and maintenance. Uh, you mean they store the data in the ground sensor, not the ground station? In the ground sensor. station for downlink the data, no, not the, in the ground sensor. sensor. In the sensor they are. Right, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Not the sensor, the sensor system. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's more than leveling. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, we have uh, several sensors. Yeah, definitely we need a big memory and a huge uh, large uh, power. So we need to think about the system. But, um, Look, your, your satellite yeah. is, is covering this area, say, once per day. Later on, you have a constellation yeah. uh, that will be different. Mm -hmm. But uh, anyhow, you have, if, if you're going for 24 samples per day, 
Yes. You have to store data until you can get rid of them to transmit it on to yeah, exactly. the satellite. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And uh, that needs some, yeah, it's, it's a very complex system. It's not that easy uh, to do it without maintenance and without um, a certain amount of power supply. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we uh, will uh, supply power from the secondary battery and uh, solar cells because we, uh, we cannot expect ex external out, uh, power source because we need to put uh, this sensor in a very rural area where, where the people cannot reach to easily. So it's kind of a, a satellite operate on the ground. So and, um, I understand this is not so simple. It's a challenge, yeah. Yes, that's right. I think the, uh, the dominant cost factor would be the, the sensors, no doubt. I mean, as the total cost consideration. So you say you have no idea of how many sensors you need uh, but uh, do you have any target cost per a uh, unit to be planted? I'm sure you sh yes, you'll uh, be able to. You probably want to plant this every ten kilometers at least uh -huh. along the riverside. Yes. So that will give you the rough idea. Yes. The uh, uh, spatial frequency of the sensor planting. Mm -hmm. Based on that, uh, what kind of um, uh, target price or cost are you thinking about per sensor? Okay. Um, Currently, we target cost is six hundred dollars. That uh, one third of this cost will be a transmitter, and I allocate the one hundred dollars for a sensor, and uh, one three hundred dollars for uh, other bus systems. This is the target cost, and uh, we uh, the one the manufacturer is uh, not promising, but. He's saying we can, uh, they can provide their transmitter with two hundred dollars. So I, ho I think we can accommodate the sensor, uh, be less than six hundred dollars. Okay, so I know we have several more questions, but it's time to go to the next presenter. Thank you very much for the presentation. Thank you very much. Okay, we have two.